Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and we're gonna talk about Doctor Who. Again, it is a case of Doctor Who Cares, the Doctor Who New Year's Spectacular. Uh, pulled in less than stellar ratings. According to the DailyMail.com, we had a couple people tag us on Twitter, and I, I apologize, I forget exactly uh, who did that. We have multiple people tag us in, but thank you so much for that. Um, this is coming from the Daily Mail. Doctor Who New Year's Day special suffers its worst ratings since the show was rebooted, pulling in nearly 6 million less viewers than in 2018. We know that Doctor Who has been on the decline for the last year or two. Basically, people tuned in to Jodie Whittaker. They thought they were going to get something uh, different, something better than what Stephen Moffat gave us. Uh, or they were just morbidly curious about how the BBC would handle a female doctor. And it has been a disaster, not necessarily because of the doctor being a female, to be clear. But the show itself has been ham-fisted and preachy and boring as hell. And it also retconned the entire mythos the entire backstory of the Doctor, which was a huge middle finger to many longtime fans. You know, 60 years of canon, and they just told the fans to go piss off. And the people who retconned the Doctor's origin story are probably the least qualified people to, to even touch the history of the Doctor. So many other writers that would have done a better job with it, and they let the uh, soap opera writers and Chris Chibnall handle it. Go figure. So we're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 250,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, we've definitely, uh, it's been a long time coming, and thank you so much. Uh, I, you know, I remember when we first started talking about Doctor Who, we had five or 10,000 subs, and uh, we don't talk about Doctor Who nearly as much as we used to. Because really, you know, I've, I've given up on the show, especially after the retcon. I'm like, I was willing to give it a shot. And I watched the first couple episodes of Jodie Whittaker's first season, Chibnall's first season. And it was very clear that it was going to be very political and ham-fisted. And about three or four episodes in, I'm like, you know what? I'm just, I'm bored. I'm not even angry. I'm just bored. And uh, I got angry, however, when they decided they were going to retcon the Doctor's origin story. Uh, that, uh, you know, William Hartnell is no longer the first doctor. He's probably like the 1,001st doctor. Uh, just absolutely ridiculous. So I didn't tune in for the New Year's special. And I didn't tune in for the end of Flux either. I don't give a shit. Uh, but you know what's more important than the retcon? What's more important right now to the media? The ship. The ship, yes. Yes, apparently the doctor and Yaz are a thing. And... Uh, no one can handle, absolutely no one can handle my ship. Yaz has feelings for the doctor confirmed. Oh, wow. They just officialized Thadsman. Well, that's the ship confirmed then. Oh, my God. They've actually done it. Where were you and Dan Lewis called Yasmin Khan out on her feelings for the doctor? All the feels. Oh, my God. Our ship. Well, the ship is going to sink anyway because Russell T. Davies is coming in. Yeah, and I, I think they're going to reboot like everything. So good luck with that. Uh, everybody is so, so excited that they got their ship because this is who they're pandering to. Tumblr, uh, you know, but the, the rest of the world is tuning out. So let's go back to this. Uh, let's go back to this from the Daily Mail. The Doctor Who New Year's Day special suffered its worst rating since the show was rebooted 17 years ago. The episode, which starred current time Lord Jody Whittaker, pulled in just 3.4 million viewers compared to 9 million in 2018. It's been revealed. It comes as Russell T. Davies is returning as the Doctor Who showrunner in a bid to save the show. Save the show amid falling ratings 12 years after he stepped away from the series. Now, I'm not holding out hope for Russell T. Davies. I was very excited when they announced that he was coming back. And uh, his production company is going to have complete creative control over Doctor Who. That being said, the Russell T. Davies of 2022 is not the Russell T. Davies of 2005. Um, and also, the damage has been done. Short of just completely retconning Doctor Who and, and uh, either ignoring the Chris Chibnall era completely, and we, you know, we can't do that because you know Twitter's going to have a meltdown, or just retconning the whole damn show and starting over with another first doctor. I don't know how you can save this. 
you know, you could pull some wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff out of your ass, I guess, and try to, you know, explain it all as being a hoax or a alternate something timeline. I don't know. I don't know. But the damage is done. The damage has been done to this show. And it's not just a flesh wound. It's a moral septic stab wound at this point. And so many people have left. And, you know, if Russell T. Davies makes any more missteps, it's it's just over. This is like the last chance they have to save Doctor Who to get people back. And I don't know if he can do it. I don't know if he's going to be allowed to do it. You know, despite having creative control, I don't know if he's willing to do it because he might not be willing to do what it actually takes to to bring this show back from the brink of death, which is frankly uh, roll the clock back a little bit, give people a more traditional doctor, I think, a more traditional doctor companion relationship. Um, And I don't know if he's going to be willing to do that. Uh, So the special called Eva the Dalek saw the doctor become stuck in a terrifying time loop where she repeatedly died and came back to life. Um, The latest figure is for those who watched live on the day. Final ratings, including viewers on catch up or recordings will be released next week. A source told the Sun Jody's legacy is leaving behind viewing figures that are among the worst in the show's long history. Although far more people watch programs on catch-up, this still doesn't make up for the decline in viewers since 2018. Uh, Plus, the BBC always saw Doctor Who as the kind of show that was event TV. It used to be. It used to be for me. Uh, I've said it many times before. Doctor Who is one of the few shows. One of the few shows that I made sure I watched live each and every week for years. And, you know, I was the last one in our family to tune out. And it only took four or five episodes of Chibnall's uh, Doctor Who to to turn me off to the show. Uh, It used to bring the whole family together at the same time. That doesn't seem to be happening. Can't imagine why. Can't imagine why. When they're pandering to shippers on Twitter, I can't imagine why the family is not tuning in anymore. A BBC spokesperson said Doctor Who is one of the most popular shows on BBC iPlayer and has been streamed 50 million times in the past year. Okay, which episodes of Doctor Who? Which episodes of Doctor Who? Because they're being very obtuse. Are we talking Whitaker Doctor Who? Are we talking people are going back and watching David Tennant Doctor Who, Tom Baker Doctor Who? you got to be more specific. 7 million streams so far for the latest series. Okay, as audiences increasingly value the option to choose when and where they watch it. It was reported last year that there has been a steady fall in Doctor Who viewership, which has been declined for five years. Yeah, it can't possibly be true. You know, that can't be true. Why would they bring Russell T. Davies back and give him the keys to the TARDIS to do whatever the hell he wants to do if the show wasn't on death's door? You know, it was said that Jodie Whittaker and showrunner Chris Chibnall had attracted just half the audience during their pairing compared to when uh, the Russell T. Davies led David Tennant fronted version of the show uh, brought in eyeballs, even the Matt Smith era, even the Peter Capaldi era. Look at this. Crash and burn. Yeah, like she started out strong because people were, you know, curious, I think, and they were willing to give the show a chance. And the Capaldi era kind of, you know, faltered. And now we're we're below Capaldi. Like this is where we're at, guys. The Telegraph reported at the beginning of the year that episodes were drawing in fewer than five million viewers. The paper added that such numbers are not dissimilar to when the show was axed in 1989. It's not a good sign. In comparison, more than 10 million viewers watched David Tennant's Doctor Who finale in 2010, according to The Guardian. Hey, so here's here's the thing. And, and uh, you know, we've been talking about it. Geeky and I have been talking about it. When Doctor Who was the most popular, you had a younger, good-looking doctor and good-looking female companions. Well, mostly good looking, but you know what I'm saying? Like you had that, that romantic, uh, potential tension going on, even with Matt Smith, uh, Rory and Amy, there was kind of a love triangle thing going on there. Doctor Who started to drop off when frankly, they brought in Peter Capaldi, who I freaking loved. Capaldi was actually of, of the new doctors. He is my favorite. I just think he was given garbage, garbage scripts to work with. But I am an old head, so for me, it's like, yeah, he's kind of a throwback to Tom Baker. I love Peter Capaldi. That being said, 
when the show had the most mass appeal. Young, male, good-looking doctor, female companion, a uh, little bit of uh, 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 sexual tension going on there. And I know a lot of Doctor Who purists don't like that because, you know, the original series, there wasn't nothing going on. But when the new show was the most popular, it was a more traditional will-they-won't-they they kind of scenario. And when they lost that, you can see exactly where they lost it. And it was in the Capaldi era, you know, because during Tennant and, you know, uh, Eccleston, Tennant and Smith's era, you always had that dynamic. And then once Capaldi came in, it was very clear that the doctor was not your boyfriend. He was like your uncle, your weird uncle you traveled with. The, the viewership dropped off. You know, then they brought in Bill and there was no chance in hell of anything going on. Now, Dr. Missy, they could have, you know, done something there, but, you know, who, who cares? People uh, tuned in thinking, hey, maybe we can change it up a little bit and we're, we're worse than, than we were at the end of uh, Capaldi's run. I'm just saying, if they want to fix Dr. Who, they want to bring people back to Dr. Who, they're probably going to have to roll it back to a more traditional doctor and at least make the episodes entertaining again and not so ham-fisted. But I don't know if current year Russell T. Davies is going to do that. I honestly think he might double down on, uh, you know, frankly, woke politics and the show is going to suffer for it. Absolutely. It might do a little better than under Chibnall because at least Russell T. Davies, when he's uh, going off on his political beliefs, at least he's entertaining. I'll give him that. Uh, Chibnall, not so much. Anyway, uh, latest episode, Can You Hear Me? Saw just 3.81 million viewers tuning in on the overnight ratings, which according to Cosmic Book News was 22, a 22% decrease since the first episode of season 12, which aired 10 months earlier. Yeah, it's it's dropping off a cliff. Like, look at this. By the time we got to the Timeless Children, this right here was a kiss of death. Okay, this is Can You Hear Me? This was uh, earlier in the season, but the Timeless Children was a kiss of death. When they decided they were going to retcon Doctor Who, it was it was the stab, the mortal stab wound. And figures released in March 2020, the same month the series ended, Doctor Who's ratings slipped to its lowest since the show made a comeback in 2005. The season finale of Series 12 had a total TV audience of only 4.6 million, making it the lowest Doctor Who has ever been. The previous all-time low was 4.7 million in 2017. Series 12 saw an average viewership of 5.4 million. It comes after earlier this week, Doctor Who producers hinted hinted that the next Time Lord will be another woman. And there we go. Guys, Russell T. Davies is not going to fix it. Shit. That's, it, it is what it is. Doctor Who's, it's done. It's done. Production notes for the next series of the BBC sci-fi show suggest a female will be starring yet again. Um... As it's uh, it's a sins, Lydia West widely tipped to take over the mirror reports. Well, that's a rumor. I, I don't I don't think that's been confirmed yet. Uh, current Time Lord Jodie's role comes to an end this autumn with a regeneration episode after she became the first ever female Doctor in 2017. If they go down this road again, even if it's Russell T Davies, even even though Russell T Davies I think can make a uh, much much better more entertaining show than Chris Chibnall, people are not going to come back. They're not going to come back. You know, fool me once, they're not going to come back. They want the traditional doctor-companion relationship. That's That would bring people back, but they're not going to do it. They're not going to, guys. Entertainment Industry website Production Weekly lists the new episodes as a fancy action saga of a mysterious alien time traveler, Doctor Who, who picks up human companions, faces evil foes with little more than her wits, and a sonic screwdriver and journeys through time and space in a police phone booth called the TARDIS. Uh, Jody herself recently called for another female doctor. She told Radio 1's Vic Hope and Jordan North, if we had the power to choose, I'm going to pick an actress. An actress who I think is really exciting and I think would be phenomenal, an actress called Lydia West, if I had the power. Um, this is Lydia West. Uh, Lydia is bookmaker Coral's favorite to replace Jody at 3-1 to one odds. Um, Ali Alexander I would have been okay with, actually. I think he was, he was all right. This isn't going to work. And you know what? They're doing this because they're like... Guys, you bunch of man babies, you're not getting your way. You're not getting another uh, uh, straight white doctor. It's not going to happen. 
you know, um, this is who Doctor Who is now. We've retconned Doctor Who. Doctor Who started out as a as a little girl, and Doctor Who is going to be a girl from now on. That's that's how it's going to be. And if you don't like it, because you know this flies in the face of 50, 60 years of canon, well, fuck you, you misogynists. That's what they feel. That's how they feel. You know, I think they're going to triple down on it, guys. I don't. I, I, Russell T. Davies isn't going to fix it. The actress told Entertainment Weekly of how she was grief-ridden when she filmed the scenes for her leaving. Uh, she filmed the final scenes for the autumn episode at the end of 2021 and said of the experience, I've shot my version of regeneration, and it was singularly the most emotional day on set I think I've ever had. Well, at least she got some emotion. Uh, got some emotion into the role, because <laughs> I don't think her doctor has any emotion. Uh, Jody has said previously... She's leaving the coveted role this year because she feels it needs new energy. But the star also confessed she isn't sure she's making the correct decision. No, I think she got pushed out. I think she got pushed out by the BBC. I think the BBC is like, holy shit, this is a train wreck. And you know what, though? If they go back to uh, Chibnall's uh, uh, box of magic tricks, it's going to be another disaster, guys. Jody admitted to the publication it felt strange to feel sad because she made the decision to leave. It's bizarre to leave. A yada, 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 yada. She's leaving in the spring. Um, I think it's done. I think Doctor Who's over. I, I think it's over. I think I think that the uh, 12th Doctor regenerated uh, and he uh, maybe became the Watcher or something and, and just kind of walked off into the sunset. I don't, I don't think there is any hope for this show. Uh, I thought there was briefly with Russell T. Davies, but it's it's bad. I, I don't think that they're going to be able to fix it, especially if they double down on some of the missteps with Chibnall. And I think they're going to, unfortunately. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.